Hey guys, Mono here, and I think one of the most confusing things for new players jumping into Halathus is just the sheer amount of different loadouts that there are available. Like, you look at Rifleman, Assault, Automatic, Rifleman, like, why would you go Rifleman if you can go Automatic Rifleman, right? Isn't Automatic Rifleman better than Rifleman? Like, surely it is, right? Well, no, no, it really isn't. So I thought in this video I'd go over the different loadouts, talk a bit about what they are, give a general overview, talk about the most important ones, the meta, which are the most picked ones and why that is the case, and so on. So yeah, let's start with a general overview. And that is to say that when you're a low level player, the German army isn't super good because you are stuck with a lot of car 98s in the level one uh, loadout. So for example, Rifleman is stuck with a car 98, when you go to support, you're stuck with a car 98. Anti-tank, car 98 for the first load as, uh, as well. Engineer, the same. So if you're a low level, level player, you should find the American army to have better weapons overall because you have the uh, Garand instead of having the car. So your default loadout for every single class on the allied side is gonna mostly have a Garand and the Garand is vastly superior to the car 98 in Hell at Luce. So going allied is better. Now, obviously, like you're stuck in whatever team you are stuck in. So let's talk about the cool loadouts that you can pick. And starting off by saying that automatic rifleman is not one of the best loadouts in the game. I think it's one that a lot of people go to because like the name and just like the weapons that are available in case of the United States, you have the BAR, which sounds very good and a Thompson with some smoke grenades. And in the German army, you have the SCG-44, the MP-40, or the FG-42. All of which are solid choices, except for the FG-42, because the sights on the FG-42 are just trash. They're really not very good. And there's nothing that the FG-42 does better than the SCG-44. So there's absolutely no reason to pick the FG-42 over the SCG-44, which is the first loadout. But the problem the automatic rifleman has is that you don't have any smoke grenades and in general you just don't have a lot of utility in general. You maybe have like two grenades, the, the MP40, the second loadout has some smoke grenades, the same goes for the Allied, when you pick the Thompson you have some smoke grenades, but you don't have anything else. So it's a decent choice in some maps, but in a lot of maps where you have long range engagements such as Foy, Purple Heart Lane, Hortgen Forest and so on, Getting stuck with a Thompson or a BAR or even an STG-44 as a German, like, yes, the STG-44 is very good, but there are situations where I would rather have something like a G-43 and stuff like that. However, you know, as a German loadout, it's really good. For the other armies, it's not as good just because of the STG being as good as it is. On the Russian side, you get the PPSH with the drum mag, which is significantly worse than the PPSH with the stig mag. So again, automatic rifleman, a lot of people might think at first shot that it's really good class. It it's it's a mediocre class, I'd say. All right, let's go now with rifleman. Rifleman, I feel like is one of the most underappreciated classes. Yes, it's the most basic class in the game. Yes, the German rifleman sucks because you get the car 98 again. Second loadout, you also get the car 98, but then you get the G43 with an explosive ammo box and two grenades. And this is one of the best loadouts in the entire game. You get the G43, some grenades, and the explosive ammo box, allowing you to replenish your own grenades. So you effectively get four grenades and you can replenish the smoke grenades and regular grenades for every squad mate or basically your entire team making it extremely powerful in situations where you need a lot of smoke to push. This is a really powerful loadout. For the Russians, you only get like a variation of the rifle. The second type has a better sight, so that's the better loadout. And you also have some smoke grenades and regular grenades and the explosive ammo box. So, you know, overall a really solid rifleman kit for the Soviets here with the American being probably the best one out of all of them, except for the G43 loadout on the Germans. Next up, we have Assault. And Assault is one of the best classes in the entire game. It has really good loadouts on all of the teams. So for the Americans, you start off with a Thompson grenade, smoke grenade combo. Then you have 
basically the same but with the shotgun which is inherently worse because the shotgun is worse than the thompson in almost every single situation then you have the grenadier loadout which is insane because you have four smoke grenades plus six grenades with a thompson it's a really good loadout just due to the amount of grenades that you get however when you go to the germans you have the exact same thing except you get one less smoke grenade but you have the g43 and this is one of the best loadouts in the entire game this is an extremely powerful loadout followed by the stg44 satchel combo loadout which again this is also the other one of those best in the game kind of loadouts the stg44 is an extremely good weapon at any range and you get a satchel allowing you to blow up tanks nodes buildings with people on them basically anything you want for the russians you get a very similar situation but you don't have a satchel you do have the stick mag ppsh with smoke and regular grenades that's the one you want to go for the second loadout with the drum mag is just a worse loadout overall you lose your smoke grenades and you have a worse weapon with more recoil and just a bigger spread so it doesn't make any sense to pick this loadout for the united states the last loadout is the grease gun with the satchel charge so very similar to the stg44 loadout with the satchel but you get a grease gun the grease gun is a very meme weapon you get some random headshots with it but overall it's a mediocre gun the stg44 loadout is obviously better so yeah the assault is like it's one of the kits that you really want to level up because these satchel loadouts are just so extremely powerful so the assault loadout is really good Skipping over automatic rifleman because you already did that. Let's go over to medic. You shouldn't play medic. I've done a video on this. I will make another video on why you shouldn't play medic. The medic is just not a very useful class, not one I would recommend taking ever in the game, except for some very niche situations where using smoke, like for example, Omaha Beach, is extremely useful and you're assaulting a point on offensive mode or something like that. Like, it's, it's worse to have a medic than basically anything else, in my opinion, because you lose so much firepower as medic. So for the United States, you have the carbine, which is one of the worst weapons in the game. And then you have a loadout with a gun and some additional smoke grenades. So, yeah, like, if you need smoke grenades, then I guess use this. For the Germans, you have the Car 98 loadout, followed by the same concept here with the Luger. And for the Russians, it's very much the same. I do not recommend anyone play Medic, but, you know, if you're gonna play Medic, I guess go with a second loadout to get some extra smoke grenades. Alright, Support is one of the loadouts that offers some of the best weapons in the game, which is kind of weird, because you do miss all your grenades, you do have the second loadout has these small ammunition box and explosive ammo box, making you very useful for your team. And overall, the support class is one class you, you should always have on your squad because it's extremely useful to have supplies at any given moment to build a garrison or to build an AT gun or anything. But the first American loadout, you got the Garand. Garand is obviously very good, as I've mentioned. The second loadout, you got the Grease Gun. Not as useful as the German loadout with the MP40. Obviously, the standard loadout has the Car 98, which is awful. And for the Russians, the second loadout gets the SVT-40, which is very comparable to the G-43. So the second Soviet support loadout is actually, I'm going to say, the second best loadout out of the entire Soviet Union army, just because it gets the SVT. So support class, very useful, one that you should really use. Machine Gunner for the Allies you get the Browning and the BAR. The Browning is all right, nothing really spectacular about it. The German MGs, both of them are better than the Browning, the MG34 and the MG42. Right now, there's not really any reason why you should ever pick the MG34 over the 42. Hopefully that changes in the future with like barrel heating up mechanics or something. But right now, just pick the MG42. And for the Soviet Union, you get the DP-27, which is absolutely garbage. The fire rate is not very good, and it's just overall not a really good kit. Then we have the AT loadouts, which are really good in a lot of the situations. Starting off 
with the United States with the loadout level 1 where you had the Garand and the Bazooka. This is one of the best loadouts in the entire game. The Garand is just, you know, you can't go wrong with the Garand and you get the Bazooka allowing you to destroy garrisons or OPs at range as well as tanks or just shoot through windows and stuff like that and clear buildings. Really useful loadout. Second loadout is very much the same except you lose the Bazooka and you have the AT gun building wrench basically. And the last loadout, th this is very similar for both the US, Germans and the Soviets. The Soviets get like a rifle, the, the Germans have the Car 98 of course. And the last loadout you have the Thompson with the Satchel Charge. I've already talked about how useful the Satchel Charge is, so this is a really useful loadout. You get the big ass cake mines that the Americans use. These aren't very useful because you can't really hide them, but if you put them in tall grass or after like hedgerow crosses and stuff like that, they can be quite effective. The Germans, as I mentioned, very much the similar idea, but you do have the MP40. The MP40 is one of the best weapons in the game, so this loadout is spectacular with the Satchel Charge and the German mines. The Soviet Union gets the PPSH with the Stig Mag. Again, fantastic loadout. With the level one, you get the PTRS as your AT solution. The PTRS can only damage the tracks or basically damage anything from behind. It does take a huge amount of shots to basically damage anything with this. So I would recommend you stick to the Satchel Charge, which is going to be much more effective. And the Russian AT mines, which are fairly easy to hide. So yeah, overall, anti-tank, really effective. Lastly, we have the Engineer. For the Russians, it's fairly standard. You have a variation with the Satchel Charge and, the, and the, the rifle is very much the same on both. For the US, you have a bit more interesting. The first loadout has the carbine, so avoid it like the plague. Second, you have the shotgun with some smoke grenades and a Satchel Charge, making this like a very close quarters style based loadout, which can be very useful in urban combat maps, but not very useful elsewhere. And lastly, you have the grease gun that you used to get the satchel with, but that's now in the shotgun loadout. So this kit is just not as useful as it used to be, and you're stuck with the grease gun, which again is a very hit or miss weapon. So this loadout is just not super powerful. For the Germans, very much a similar idea. You got the Carnegie with the mines, or the MP40 with the satchel. The MP40 loadout with the satchel and the S-mine and the smoke grenade is a really, really fun loadout to use. It is extremely effective and you have a lot of firepower with the MP40, so this is one, again, a really solid loadout for the Germans. For the Soviet Union, I already went over it. It's just not very good. And lastly, we have the officer kits, and the officer kits suffer from having an SMG on their first loadout, making it kind of hard to make it useful in a lot of map situations. So for the Soviets, you get the PPSH stick version, the Thompson for the Americans, and the MP40 for the Germans. Out of all of these, the MP40 is my preferred weapon. But then you have the G43 for the Germans and the Car 98. The Car 98 loadout has more grenades, but obviously the G43 is a much better weapon than the Car 98 because it is semi-auto and it basically has the same range and same characteristics as the Car 98. For the Soviet Union, you start having the SVT, which is basically the same as the G43. So both of these second loadouts are really good for the Soviets and the Germans. The third kits, not very much. You get the drum mag for the Soviets on the PPSH. For the United States, you do have the carbine on the second loadout, so avoid this. And it will take you some time until you get the third and final officer loadout, having the Garand and three smoke grenades and three grenades. This... Garand loadout with the grenades is one of the best loadouts in the entire game. I know I've said this multiple times through the video, but basically this, the German assault loadouts, the AT American loadout, and the AT Russian, sorry, the AT German loadout with the MP40, those I think are the best kits in the game. So that's pretty much it. So as a general thing, the assault loadout, the AT loadout, and the support loadout or engineer variation loadouts, like the second classes on the engineer, are what you want to go for most of the times. 
If you're playing allied, you can easily default to rifleman if you don't know what to pick, because you get the Garand, which is really good. If you're German, try and level up the rifleman by building stuff until you get to this last loader, because that's going to give you options when both assault, automatic rifleman, support, and AT are picked. And for the Soviets, you're just out of luck. Not a huge amount of good loadouts for the Soviet Union, except for the support, which has the SVT, the anti-tank, and the assault. All right, that's gonna be it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned a bit more about what loadouts to use. And if you liked it, then please give it a like. And as always, thank you for watching, and I hope I will catch you in the next one.